Hey, this is Mark Altman, one half of the Inglorious Trexperts, and season two begins this month on the Electric Surge Network. Keep boldly going as we return to the airwaves with airwaves? I don't know. It's not really airwaves, is it? It's it's like, what is streaming? It's like zeros and ones, right, Darren? We return to the Wi-Fi. We I return think. to the Wi-Fi, wherever you listen to podcasts. So join the Inglorious Trexperts for an all-new season of Inglorious Trexperts. If you're a fan of the 430 movie, you'll love Best Movies Never Made, hosted by myself, Josh Miller. And Steven Scarlatta. Where we explore some of the greatest movies never made, like E.T. 2. Johnny Quest. Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian. And Halloween 3D. New episodes available every other Monday, wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, if you're a Star Wars fan, check out the new Star Wars podcast, The Rebel and the Rogue, every Tuesday on the Electric Surge Network, wherever you listen to podcasts. Back in the 70s and 80s, before the advent of VHS, chances are, if you saw a classic movie, it was on the 430 movie. With their famous theme weeks, it was a chance to see movies you've never seen before and get reacquainted with some old classics. So now, join us for the 430 movie. Hey, this is Mark A. Altman, and welcome back to the 430 movie. As Spooktober, Spocktober, Scaretober, <laughs> what do we decide on? Why well, something's continuing. We Monstertober? Could, we could just call it October. As could, October uh, Halloween October, haunts continues. October Fest. October Ooh, Fest. Scary. As we celebrate yeah. a month of scares with my favorite scareologists. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> On my left. <laughs> The very scary Steve Melton. <laughs> Ooh, hello, welcome. And Darren Doctorman. In 3D. <laughs> well, 2D. <laughs> and, of course, Ashley Edward Miller. I need a young priest and an old priest. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Mark A. Altman. And you are listening to the 430 movie. And uh, in celebration of Halloween uh, this this month, we were counting down our, some of our favorite horror genres. Today, it's The Devil Made Me Do It. The Devil. The Devil. What in the blazes? What in the devil? <laughs> Go to the devil. That's what they used to say on Star Trek because they couldn't say hell. That's right. Go to the devil. From a fable you once heard in childhood. <laughs> Go to the devil. <laughs> so we're going to deal with movies that deal with uh, Satan, devil, possession. I pronounce it Shatan. Uh, as, as, as Modius, um, these are Bale all suburb. Uh, Lucifer, Bezel, did Bale, you say Beelzebub? The Haunted One. A <laughs> lot of great, lot of great movies, a lot of great movies, and uh, as we always do here on the Four Thirty Movie, we curate a fantasy theme week of classic films uh, in the style of the old Four Thirty Movie. Each uh, panelist will take a day, and we'll program an entire week of our fantasy theme week, starting with Monday and Steve Melching. <laughs> well, hello. I, I, uh, I was just thinking, I was just remembering, thinking back fondly on my uh, my younger days when uh, every Easter Sunday, I would host a screening, a themed screening at That's my apartment right. called Satan Day. Right. I, oh, I remember Darren, that. Yeah, I think Mark yeah. might have come to yeah, a couple absolutely. of those. Yeah, Counter programming for yeah, Easter. For Easter. Yeah. I was horribly blasphemous, but uh, <laughs> we watched uh, a lot of good movies about uh, Satan and evil sure. and all that kind of we thing. We scrambled Satan our eggs. Works. <laughs> <laughs> but, what, uh, what are some of the films? No, don't tell us. Well, no, so. I'm yeah, sure yeah, yeah. most a lot of the films we'll talk we'll about come up, yeah, today yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. we screened there. Those were fun times. Yeah. Good times. We all wore black. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why today? I had a lot more anything? eyeliner then. <laughs> a lot more eyeliner. Yeah, that's right. So, um, but uh, Devil Made Me Do It. There are some great movies. Why, why do you think movies are so fascinated with uh, with with the devil and with Satan and demonic demonic themes? Because it's a metaphor for the movies <laughs> and yeah. making them. And so many people in the movie industry are devil worshippers. Yes, that is true. <laughs> God knows Apparently. we all are. <laughs> Stay tuned for our Black Mass podcast. <laughs> it's like the anti Yule log. Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, Krampus. But it allows you get to get close to evil. Without safely. It actually. Yeah, get safely. close to evil. <laughs> One <laughs> teaspoon of that oh, will turn you all Hold into on. warthogs. I'm or something. changing the name of the week from the devil made me do it to get close to evil week. <laughs> <laughs> Show us on the doll where evil touched you. <laughs> Cozy up to evil. Oh. Okay, Steve. So Monday, uh, Monday would be our first day of, uh, of, and I break out the devil dogs, you know, um, from uh, deviled eggs. Deviled eggs. Yep, exactly. 
Um, yeah, well, the, my pick is a movie that uh, we did not screen at Satan Day because it's not really readily available on home video. The Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> Frankie Payne is the devil. <laughs> Climbing that glass mountain called success. You know that movie is coming out on Blu-ray? I can't it believe is. it. It is. Kino Lorber that. is releing it. We That's have to do something so exciting. this year. I have mixed feelings, though. Well, yeah, because it, it used to be this thing that only we had. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of everybody been, will have it. Now yeah. it belongs to the world. Exactly. The higher quality. Everyone's just going to be buying it. It's going to be a huge bestseller. Yeah. yeah. We have, um, I don't think we have to worry about they that. They sold 1,100 copies. I think when it comes out, I think we should do a special week of um, for them. We just devoted to the Oscar. Maybe we should do live commentary. Oh, my. That'd be fun. I think we should do live commentary for the Oscar. And and you know it could be partially a celebration of Harlan Ellison's life, and and uh, maybe Kino Lorbner could uh, uh, sponsor it so that they'll actually get sales on it. That's true because people don't know. People By the way, don't, I don't know if you guys have read it or not, but his teleplay for City on the Edge of Forever is just <laughs> crap. Oh, oh my <laughs> God! Okay, so listen, the joke that Ashley's making on our sister podcast, Inglorious Trexperts, we did an episode on overrated Star Trek episodes, and Mr. Doctorman here um, picked uh, City on the Edge of Forever, not the televised version, but actually Harlan Nelson's original teleplay, which as uh, his overrated uh, selection, which has been which, quite which I th- I controversial. I thought I would have gotten more negative response from, but actually, uh, all I've gotten was positive, yeah. probably because uh, Harlan is deceased. So people well, are speaking I mean, their mind more. Harlan is a is a brilliant writer, and and the script was a good piece of Harlan Ellison's work. It just wasn't a great Star Trek. Right. Anyway, how about anyway, Monday? So Monday. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my pick is a movie not readily available on home video. Uh, it's not readily seen anywhere. It was banned a lot. It was when it was released. It was rated X. Oh, I know what this is. You know what this is, and there's a. And, we sort of tell you right, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a movie that uh, was announced for Blu-ray release by Warner's in 2008, mm-hmm. and then dropped from the schedule. I, I believe it popped up briefly on HBO, uh, HBO Go, for like three days mm-hmm. before it suddenly was unceremoniously dropped. It's bizarre. It's a bizarre movie. But it's a movie that's n- that is about. Uh, demonic possession, but there's not an actual demonic possession in it. Mm. It's more about, rather than the horror of being possessed by the devil, it's about the horror of institutions coming down on on uh, innocent people. And I'm talking about Ken Russell's 1971 The Devils, um, starring uh, uh, Vanessa Redgrave and Oliver Reed. And this is a movie that is... Um, Really worth uh, pursuing. couldn't make it today. No, no, no chance. No, and it it's so controversial. It's still not easy to come by. Um, and it's it's it, it's unusual because it's based on a true story. Um, this actually happened in the city of Loudon, France. In um, what year was it? Sixteen thirty four. Um, there was a a uh, sort of a renegade priest named Father Urbain Grandier uh, who. Uh, made a lot of powerful enemies in the power structure in France, um, especially Cardinal Richelieu. <laughs> and uh, there was a, a convent of Ursuline monk uh, nuns um, that claimed they were being possessed by devils. And, and Grandier, one of the things he had done to, to make enemies was oppose the dismantling of the walls protecting the city of Loudon. And uh, that earned him the wrath of a lot of people. And he was accused of, um, and he may have actually had illicit affairs uh, with with local women. And he was accused of being a warlock, basically, of, of, uh, of summoning the devil and creating these uh, demonic possessions of these nuns. And he was uh, scapegoated, put on trial, and burned at the stake. And Ken Russell made a movie about it that is just bonkers. I mean, it's it's the the set designs are gorgeous. The cinematography is gorgeous. I mean, Oliver Reed is there in all his full throated, you know, chewing the scenery glory. Vanessa Redgrave is also pretty damn over the top as this hunchback nun, the the leader of the convent of nuns who. Um, develops an unhealthy sexual obsession with Grandier. And when he marries another woman in secret, she um, feigns demonic possession and and all the other nuns in the convent start 
you know, acting out sexually and, and, and crazy, crazily, and that attracts the attention of the local authority, you know, the, the authorities, and they begin their, you know, their, their investigation into these possessions that, that ultimately leads to his, uh, his trial and death. I had only heard of this movie. It was kind of an infamous film and, you know, was a fan of Ken Russell. Um, a lot of his movies like Les Mania and then, of course, uh, Layer of the White Worm. And, mm-hmm. and uh, the, you know, it's just, you know, always found him fascinating, you know, fascinating director, you know, just out there. And we saw The Devils for the first time at the Telluride Film Festival. And while I don't think it's necessarily a great movie, it's a fascinating one. Yeah. And it kind of is like the Caligula of the 70s. Ah. You know, it was this famous movie, what? which was just like really like everyone talked about it. It was just like super sexual but and super profane. Um, but it, it's actually very well made. And there yeah. are some great performances in it. And uh, it, 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 is, uh, it is tough to come by to, to, to get a hold and of. I, it was one of the biggest box office hits in England of that year. And uh, it, it, Roger Ebert gave it zero stars, but it has since been, you know, the subject of a lot of reappraisal yes. as people have, have uh, taken a second look at it. Um, and I, I remember when Mark and I saw the movie in Telluride, there was this guy who was a fixture at Telluride every year for years who sold one sheets. Oh, yeah. And he would set up a shop yeah. in, a, in a vacant storefront and sell these beautiful one sheets. And I, he guy. had one for the devils that I bought that yeah. year. Yeah. And I know Mark's bought... A number of I bought a bunch of stuff from him. I wonder what happened to me. I mean, obviously, neither you nor I have been there in a few years, yeah. more than a few years in my case. But uh, he, it was a pop-up one-sheet store, and I got some gorgeous, gorgeous mm-hmm. one-sheets from him over the years. Uh, you know, linen-backed, just beautiful. And uh, I remember that when he bought that, that Devil's poster. I, I do believe there were a few walkouts during that movie as well. <laughs> yeah. um, and I, it, it does happen to tell you right. I know Peter Greenaway movies had a couple of walkouts. Definitely the Devils had a few walkouts. It, it is a movie that screens periodically. Uh, the American Cinematheque shows it from time to time. I think they screened it at the Arrow about two or three years ago. Um, I think Ken Russell might have been there before he died. Hopefully. Hopefully, oh, yeah. <laughs> he was there after he died. <laughs> Best screening ever. Oddly, I actually saw it when I was in film school. I, they showed it in one of my classes, mm. and I saw it. I saw it a second time when I was in film school because I was so fascinated by it. Because so, it's, I, I will quibble with Mark in one respect. I, I'm pretty sure that Caligula was the Caligula of the 1970s. No, no, Caligula was 80s. Yeah, Caligula was 80s. Oh. I, Here, wait, I'm going to go to the phones. We're going to the phones. Okay, we're going to go to the phones. <laughs> yeah. I think well, while it we're might doing be that, 1980 I, or 81. Okay. Yeah. I, I, if, and I will stand corrected. But that said, um, I have no, not. 1979. Oh, Charlie's celebrating oh its 40, my God. 40th anniversary. On this podcast. Along wow. with The Black Hole mm. and Star Trek The Motion Picture. Right, wow. those three really? movies just go together. It's wow. a big film festival. It's. Um, everybody's going where no man has gone before. Why aren't we doing <laughs> oh uh, Caligula uh, oh, 40th anniversary oh retrospective? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> or maybe lots of men have gone before. Um, but I digress. So I have not seen this movie, but I love Ken Russell. When you said Ken Russell made it and it's just bonkers, I think that pretty much describes <laughs> every Ken Russell movie ever made. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lair of the White Worm. Bonkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Altered States may be his least bonkers yes. movie, but it's bonkers. Still bonkers. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I can't wait to see this movie. I, honestly, I didn't even know that it existed, Yeah. which is a strange thing to admit. But I'm, I'm going to run home and try to find it be very frustrated that it's not available anywhere. Yeah, and it you, won't you, be on the 430 movie in its unaltered form. I think it, we'll get it down at the 90-minute time slot because when we yeah. cut out, all the <laughs> X-rays. <laughs> I, I, uh, I believe it is. I believe there are foreign import DVDs or okay. Blu-rays of it. Yeah. So well, you I've got a region agnostic uh, player. So <laughs> you, should be able to, you should be able to get it. Okay. I have. Uh, I, I might have one I can lend you. Okay. And and I almost bought a bootleg of it at San Diego Comic Con nice. <laughs> last year. I saw it and I, I meant to go back and get it, but I was questioning the quality of it, so I, I did not. Mm-hmm. I'm Sometimes surprised Warner, bootlegs are evil. I'm yeah, surprised Warner right. Archive hasn't put it. I out. know Warner Archive. If you're listening, put this movie. Out. I mean, they've been putting there. great stuff out lately. They're putting out Fearless Vampire Killers. They they they've just put out The Thin Man on Blu-ray. Um, and the Shazam TV show and uh, and 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 and, <laughs> and motivated them. V. They put V. Oh, out, V. Yeah, right? that's on my list. You know? They're doing some terrific work. Yeah. Over there. So if you hear us, uh, hear me and rejoice. But, yeah, <laughs> well, let's the, scream uh, factory. Devils. Let shout factory put it out. Somebody, right. please. Somebody. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, great pick. The Devils. Ken Russell's The Devils. Um, Not to be confused with The Devil Rides Out. 
<laughs> no, is that your pick for Tuesday? It is not. Oh, because you know, Devil Rise Out has Charles Gray. That's the, right. The, the, the Blofeld in it. That's right. That's why I always liked right with Devil Rise. Out. I don't love the Devil Rise Out. Uh, it has some cool stuff in it, but it had Blofeld in it, yeah. so I always liked that. <laughs> not the best Blofeld. Blofeld from Diamonds Are Forever. There's a lot of Blofelds. <laughs> lot, There's a lot, Blofeld. Of, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of Blofelds. But, Too many Blofelds. Baja. Baja. I don't have nothing in Baja. <laughs> yeah, don't don't write out. Is, is is well, we'll talk about that on Friday. We'll talk about but that okay, on Friday. yeah, let's talk about Tuesday. Let's talk about Tuesday. I had a couple choices for this, and I'm only going to say one of them. <laughs> okay. Unlike other people, I on can't the panel. imagine who you're talking um, about. I, I have a feeling I know what you're going to pick. Really? Yeah. Can I guess? Guess. Exorcist Three: The Heretic. Exorcist mm-hmm. Three. No. No. Besides, I, I would have to be recused from picking that because, because you worked I on it. On well, it. see, that's why I thought you were going to pick it. I thought you might also. No. See, I'm not the only one. I also thought you might. Maybe someone else will pick it. And that, you're a big champion of that movie. I don't need to be because it's an excellent movie. Okay. And, I'm just, I'm just and millions of people think it's wonderful. You, you, you've been a big champion of the movie. That's all I'm saying. Sure. Okay. No. My, my choice is a little movie that uh, was relatively low budget. Uh, and it came out in what year? Ken Russell's Exorcist II, The Heretic. The Devil and Max Devlin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you the devil. devil. and Max Headroom. Uh, uh, this was, came out in 1995. Oh. And it's a low-budget movie called The Prophecy. Oh, oh. yes. A Viggo Mortensen. Uh, and and Christopher uh, Walken. Uh, don't bury the lead. Oh. <laughs> um, it, it stars, uh, ostensibly, uh, Virginia Madsen uh, as this uh, school teacher, I believe. Um, but the the original title was uh, War the War in Heaven, mm. um, and mm. it's a it's basically about the angels uh, have a war, and they're battling over God's creation, uh, humans, because half of them think humans are awful and mm. they took away God's love, and the other uh, half. Uh, think humans are okay and they should protect them um but christopher walken plays the uh archangel michael mm-hmm. and he's unfreaking believable uh and <laughs> I, I i remember one one uh uh one scene and it has him basically sitting on this uh, on these steps and someone walks up to him and he has his trumpet he, mm-hmm. he's holding his trumpet and uh, this person walks up to him and he says, uh, "Who are you? Where, where'd you come from?" And he and he basically just sits there and 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 he looks up and he says, "That's a long story." <laughs> 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 but it's 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 hilarious, but it's also creepy and neat. And angels are these horrific creatures yeah. with wings, and they can tear people apart. And it's it's awesome, and it's. It came as a huge surprise to me because I didn't expect anything from this. I thought it was just going to be a low budget little thing, but it has. It's a really small. It's you know what? It's kind of it. It's kind of like um, Thor, because it has this backstory of this huge other things going on, but it takes place in a really small little town. Okay, fair. Uh, and and uh, I think that's fascinating. And. Um, Basically, in a cameo, uh, basically, but he has some great, some great lines. Is Viggo Mortensen as Lucifer, and he's incredible, absolutely incredible. It's the first time I saw Viggo Mortensen. M- me too. And he is just brilliant. In his the movie. his uh, he 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 never I, I never forgot his name again. Um, and he's absolutely amazing. Find it. Go see this movie. It's unbelievable. You'll yeah, like you know, it's funny. I mean, there was actually a sequel. They made a sequel to it. I think a lot of people had the same reaction you did. Yeah. I did as well when I saw this movie, knowing very little about it. Right. And, uh, seeing it and just thinking, wow, this is really great. And I think it, it proves, uh, you know, the power of really great performances. Because Christopher Walken and Viggo Mortensen are extraordinary yeah. uh, in, in, in the movie. I, I remember at the time we were doing Sci-Fi Universe magazine. We had an award show. Viggo Mortensen won the Best Supporting Actor, I think, mm-hmm. for that movie that year. Um 
and he came and accepted. That's awesome. Um, and uh, uh, he—he's just uh, you know it was the first time I heard his name, but obviously not the last. Right. And um, uh, but it's 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 a great little movie. And so it's such an interesting out of left field pick, you know, just unexpected. It's funny because it was on my list. I <laughs> I thought about it as well, and I thought, oh, is this too? small but uh, it's a great movie and it's a great great pick have, you, have you seen it oh yeah no I look I dig the prophecy man yeah. I think what it kind of um, points up is how marketing departments I think often struggle with genre films or struggle with films um, that are great but in not obvious ways mm-hmm. uh, a, a studio executive friend once said that a great film should never be a surprise and I think a common response, if, and not Steve, I don't know if you've seen it, but like, but those of us who have seen it have had as well. That's a great movie, and I was surprised it shouldn't have happened that way. Right. Um, it, it shouldn't be an out of left field pick like that. I think is the great tragedy of it. And but but the the wonderful part about it is it it opened and it was made during a time where you could discover a movie like yes. that. Yeah. yeah, it would never have been made today. That's right. Ever. No, it would have to have Tom Cruise or something in it. Well, because... Netflix would have made it. Now that right now they did make it. Well, yeah. they made the bad version of it. What was the big that big movie they spent? The Max Landis. Uh, oh, uh, that huge movie that they. Uh, right. That bright. Yes. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Not very good movie. But uh, yeah, yeah. I remember discovering this movie on cable mm. a couple of years later. I I think I missed it when it was in theaters mm-hmm. and was just pleasantly surprised yeah. by it. I think I'd heard a little buzz about it and uh, recorded on HBO or something. Because uh, it, it starts out slow. It starts out like a cheap, like, sort of horror movie. Mm-hmm. And it it doesn't sort of open the door until a little ways in. And then you, and then you, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's, it, it sneaks up on you. Literally. <laughs> yeah, it, it walks behind you while you're watching it, right? And it shivs you, which is weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, great, great pick. So, uh, I want to say that those are both great picks. Neither um, one was uh, expected because there are certainly some films that loom very large in this genre or subgenre mm-hmm. of horror. Um, so, it'd be interesting to hear what Ashley comes up with. Oh my God. Um, Darren, you're just freaking me out, man. Yeah. I don't know what to do with this anymore. Season two. I feel like season two. You know what? Season two, I'm straight down the middle guy. Yeah. That's who I am. <laughs> um, Everybody's like, you know, like you change bodies. It's like Freaky Friday. Right? <laughs> Although I think Steve is always going to be the guy who does the research. Thank yeah. God. Thank God for Steve. <laughs> right? We're just winging it. Um, wow, man. Look, I, I love this genre in particular. There are like 100 movies that I could tell you. Go out right now and, and watch them. I'm not going to name them. Um, because that's not going to be my shtick this season. It'll be my shtick next season. Uh, okay. Uh, Still my shtick. <laughs> today the role, of, the role of Mark will be played by... <laughs> okay. I'm going to stick with my original pick. I almost changed it to to adapt hmm. to what you'd done, but I feel as though it might be a good Friday Just pick. Do what your heart okay. says. So one of my very favorite Look movies of all time, one of my favorite movie franchises of all time... Um, with one of my favorite lead characters played by my favorite leading man of all time, um, of which I have every edition of this film ever put out on any form of media whatsoever and all of its sequels. Mannequin on the Move? <laughs> yes. For the soundtrack. <laughs> which, by the way, arguably could be a devil possession movie. Uh, yeah. Oh, because a mannequin is yeah, comes to life. By, yeah. Right? Wow. You know, you put Anthony Hopkins in that sucker, and all right. of a sudden it's a totally different uh, film. It's magic. I'm sorry, do go on. <laughs> right. What was I saying? Oh, I know. One of my very favorite films of all time is also a film that I greatly admire because of the filmmaking in it. Um, even though it cost like nothing, which is what is so so admirable. I'm referring, of course, to the original 1981 Sam Raimi opus, The Evil Dead. Oh, okay. oh yes, yes. Right? fine choice. Uh, it is such a great film. It holds up even today. Sam Raimi and his crew of dorks basically made this thing for next to nothing they found a cabin in the woods they essentially created an entire genre they made a star out of bruce campbell um i could not possibly love bruce campbell more than i do and besides his name is ash right so so how am i not enamored of this film um you know trees come to life oh my gosh it's like 
you've got people getting their heads cut off and it just the the level of violence is insane it somehow manages to be both frightening and fun without being quite a horror comedy in the way that arguably evil dead 2 and army of darkness are kind of straight up horror comedies. Um, the Evil Dead just no, works on its own. There's nothing funny about Evil Dead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like anything funny about it is just darkly, yeah, sort of yeah. weirdly funny. It's it is a very scary movie, and I believe that the Coen Brothers yes. edited this film. Yes, yes. Um, oh, so oh, oh. yeah, I did so, not know that. Uh, oh, yeah. Sam Raimi invented entirely new ways uh, to get um, to get shots that should not have been possible with the amount of money that he did not have. Um, shot in sixteen millimeter. Yeah. Yeah, and he shot it like he would put cameras on um, like on skateboards. Two by four, and, yeah, and he would mm-hmm. drag them through the woods to get the shots of where like the the evil where the you know is is moving through the forest. Um, he got a like a, a sawhorse and he lubed it up mm-hmm. and he got like a C ring and he put a camera on top of it and used that to get what he camera. called like the shaky cam. <laughs> I mean, what he did was just it's amazing. Even if you're just looking at it as an exercise in filmmaking, mm-hmm. right? Even just stepping back from it as a horror film, but looking at it as like, how do you just use your noggin and be creative and truly make film mm-hmm. it, with like next to nothing? Like it, stone knives and bears. Yeah, things. it feels like a student film in the best possible right. sense of that. That's so right. true. The enthusiasm behind it, the inventiveness. Enthusiasm. enthusiasm. Man has enthusiasm. enthusiasm. What I loved, I mean, that was the era where I was reading like Cinemagic Magazine and mm-hmm. sure. making Super 8 movies. So when you see these guys who went to a cabin in the woods, which could be the the week that we're doing cabin in the woods week, um, and uh, you know shoot this movie at sixteen millimeter, you know for no money, you know in Detroit, you know, yeah. um, and and then suddenly it's discovered by Stephen King. He put that movie on the map with his quote, you know, horror has a new name or whatever he said about that movie, um, and uh, and then it just breaks out, and, and they suddenly, you know, Sam Raimi goes on has this incredible career doing Evil Dead two for. Dino De Laurentiis mm-hmm. and then Army of Darkness for Universal and all ends up doing Spider Man and all this amazing stuff. It's just the ultimate success story. And, you know, by all accounts, Sam is a great guy, you know, well deserving of a success both as a filmmaker and as a human being. It, it, it's such a great story. And of course, it gave the world Bruce Campbell, who's <laughs> amazing. And it gave us the Coen brothers because then Sam right. produced their first movie, um, which was this little. Thing. I don't rem- even remember what it was called before Blood before Simple, Blood right. Simple. Yeah. and um, and then of course they were able to get the financing to do Blood Simple because at least they could say, well, we did this, right. and then he gave us, you know, you know, one of the great filmmaking teams, one of the great filmmakers, you know, of all time, which is the Coen Brothers. Yeah, I, even the story of the financing. Of the, of the evil <laughs> the dead. Dentists. The dentists. The oh, dentists. Yeah. My God. Yeah. It's like, you know, people will talk about how, you know, oh, yeah, dentists have a lot of money and like these, they, they want to put it into things and they want to feel like, you know, they're kind of part of Hollywood and all that. But it really sort of started with the evil dead. Like Sam Raimi showed the world, like, you know, this is kind of how you do it, right? Um, and it's just, it's, there are actually books about it. Bruce Campbell wrote a book um, about the making of the evil dead and kind of the early years here with, uh, with Sam Raimi. I, I don't think it's if chins could kill. That um, was his first one, I think. Yeah. But I think you're right when you say there's almost a better movie in the making of Evil uh, Dead right. than even in Evil Dead because it started that cliche of if you want to make a low-budget horror movie, of which this was the, the, the boat that launched a thousand horror movies, it's like, go to the dentist. I and mean, we all knew it. it. It's like, you got to find a dentist. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. my, my best friend in college, his father was a dentist. I'm like, does he want to invest in movies? <laughs> <laughs> and interestingly, one of the dentists was Hermie the Elf. <laughs> <laughs> He's no, now a huge producer. <laughs> this was another one of those movies that had such an aura about it that I didn't see it when it originally came out. It was one of those that was like I wasn't a super into horror as a as a teenager mm, as a right. kid. But like it's alive, this one just kind of freaked me out a little bit. But I saw Evil Dead 2 when I was in college and I loved it. Right. It was so entertaining that I sought out Evil Dead 1. <laughs> And then got that whiplash, like, whoa, this movie is not funny. Like, Evil Dead <laughs> that yeah. is really funny because I had a similar experience in that um, I didn't see Evil Dead in theater because in the 80s I was really into like sci fi. Um, but really? also, Evil Dead, 
you know, it was playing only in the shittiest theaters. Uh, I mean, like shithole theaters in Brooklyn and New York. And so it's like, I'm not going to any of those, you know, theaters. And, and, and you know, a lot of time my friends in high school were hugely into horror. So a lot of the stuff I wouldn't discover until VHS. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I saw it on VHS and it was like, oh, I love this. It was right when I was discovering Dawn of the Dead and all these mm-hmm. sort of 80s horror movies. And it was just, but Evil Dead just stood apart. It was just so smart and it reinvented the tropes and Bruce Campbell was such a fantastic leading man. And then, you know, the stuff like the tree, the tree rape, you know, is so inventive because you hadn't seen anything like it before and terrifying and scary. And, you know, the whole use of a chainsaw. I mean, you, you know, it's like, because you're so influenced when you're making these Super 8 movies, like it was Halloween and, you know, a lot of these slasher movies. But this wasn't a slasher movie. Right. You know, because Halloween had had inspired all these slasher movie imitations. And then Evil Dead was something different, you know, which is a supernatural demonic possession. But it was so different from The Exorcist. It was, you know, it was like a slasher movie meets uh, possession. Okay. It, it was nothing, you know, where it, The Exorcist was arty. There was nothing arty about this, even though it was incredibly accomplished. Mm-hmm. One of the things I, I love most about it is that it was able to evolve, like through Evil Dead Two and um, Army of Darkness, it, tonally. That tonal yes. evolution didn't undercut um, the original film. It didn't. Those that evolution didn't feel like a like a, a betrayal or mm-hmm. um, a dismissal of what had originally been created. Sam, I've I've never felt like Sam Raimi was embarrassed by the Evil Dead. Never. You know? right. and, Even and as I, he became an Oscar nominated, more mature filmmaker, he never disowned his past. That's right. Yeah, which was great. He always he still to this day loves Evil Dead. You know, and and the guy who made The Gift and the guy who made Spider Man is still the guy who made <laughs> Evil Dead. Right. And well, he should. And in fact. Um, the car that they drive uh, to the cabin in the woods has been in every single one of Sam Raimi's movies, except I think, ob- quite obviously, The Quick and the Dead. Right. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, but if he got it into Quick and the Dead, right. more that power to him. Quite an accomplishment. If he'd done Back to the Future three, he could have made it work. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but uh, no, that's, that's 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 what a great pick. And and I'm I'm sitting here. We we're here on Thursday, and I, it's not. You know, to say it, it is astounding to me that The Exorcist has not made the cut yet is amazing because, of course, The Exorcist is the granddaddy of all uh, of these movies. I thought, and, I and thought we had already we had picked that last, last season. Year. Did we? For something. Yeah. I'm pretty so sure we did. Um, um, that's why I archivist. It. Uh, yeah. we, we, you know, Zach is here. <laughs> Zach, uh, Zach, our archivist. Um, Zach, if you would be so kind as to check the archives, <laughs> and it's possible we we might not have picked it last season because it's it's obvious, I, right? I, but we no, we did we did Vampire Week. I don't know when we would have done the Exorcist. Oh, that's right. Okay, oh, the movies Exorcist. we're thankful for. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, look, I'm not going to pick it now, so maybe right. it's for Friday. Um, I look, I think it's a brilliant movie, and Freakin oh, is a, Freakin uh, is, is a genius, and his movies in um, the '70s, '70s, uh, where uh, you know, whether it's French Connection or The Exorcist, uh, or Caligula, or, or or Cruising, no, <laughs> but uh, but he he uh, was an extraordinary filmmaker, and The Exorcist is an extraordinary horror film. That said. It's not my pick because there's a, a movie about the devil <laughs> that I prefer that I think is e- by an even more extraordinary film. Little Nicky. Little Nicky, yes. <laughs> Adam Sandler. Uh, how did you know? It's on my list. Uh, you know? Right, right, right next to Damn Yankees. Uh, <laughs> That's right. That's funny. But um, I, would, I would say, uh, look, the, the, the movie that looms largest to me is, uh, and I want to make sure we didn't pick this either, Zach, uh, is Rosemary's Baby. I think. Oh, yeah. I agree. Did we pick Rosemary's Baby? No, I, I don't think so. The archivist! I was, <laughs> Did we certain, pick it? No. Okay. Yeah, I was certain this was going to be your pick. Yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah. I, and you would be right. That's why I left it <laughs> And, and it's not even, I don't even have 10 to, to suggest. I'm going to suggest Rosemary's Baby because Rosemary's Baby is, you know, uh, it, it, this is another movie. This that baby is the daddy of them all. I had friends <laughs> who, loved, yeah, who love, love Rosemary's Baby, and it I, has a great shake recipe. And I never had any interest in seeing it. Um, uh, you, they, you know, everybody would talk about Ruth Gordon being brilliant. Right. I was like, well, I don't see that for. And uh, it was about maybe ten, fifteen years ago, where Rob Burnett, our good friend Rob Burnett, 
He says, you know, Rosemary's Baby is playing at the, uh, and I felt this was like a gaping hole in my cinematic knowledge. Right. And I had become a huge Polanski fan by then. I loved Bitter Moon. I loved, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of his, a lot of his films. But I hadn't seen Rosemary's Baby, so I'm like, I gotta go see. So we went to uh, at the Sunset Five uh, at midnight. We went to go see Rosemary Baby. And it freaking blew me away. I mean, it was like, to me, like one of the most remarkable movies I ever saw. For the next, it played there for the entire month. We, every midnight, on Saturday at midnight, we would go back and see Rosemary's Baby. <laughs> and we went back week after week. They got to know us at the theater. I said, oh, you guys are back. Oh, you're said, back. Yeah, I, I, How long ago was this? I, it was probably 20 years ago. Okay, because I was saying, when we used to play beach volleyball, our, be- we're, our, our, team. na- our teams had names. It was the Rosemary's Babies. Rob's team was the Rosemary's Babies. See, Steve, here's the thing. As we get older, when I when I say that this happened, I tend to shrink the amount of time. Time is a river. I can't possibly so it's like, be that old. You remember we made Free Enterprise five years ago? You know, so uh, ten know. years ago I was in junior high. Yeah. Yeah. So I tend to exaggerate. Oh yeah, it was, it was probably twenty five years yeah. ago, right? Yeah. Realistically, it, 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 you know, but last year we saw Rosemary's Baby. So. Um, uh, I don't even. The Sunset Five isn't even there anymore. The, certainly, Virgin Megastore isn't there anymore. Back when it was Schwab's. No, uh, <laughs> but but I just this shows you why um, Rome Polanski. You know, and again, Chinatown. We have a disagreement about, but you appreciate oh, you know the brilliance of it, even if it's not your your, your cup of tea necessarily. Um, Polanski is a, an amazing filmmaker, um, and Rosemary's Baby is an amazing film. If you've ever read the Ira Levin book, it's adequate at best. Right, it's not great. It is one of the great adaptations of the book. The style that he brings to it, just seeing the Dakota at the beginning of the movie is right. scary. Yeah. Right. You know, um, and uh, seeing Samuel Cogley, attorney at law in the elevator, is scary. Right. How is he scary? How is John Fiedler scary? But he is. So there is a, a sense of ominous and dread and. Um, I'm like, the, the music, uh, you know, it's tragically, Kamita, who, uh, Christoph Kamita, who scared, scored it, died shortly after the movie. This is another one of these movies where they attribute, you know, the, the curse of Rosemary's Baby. Right. Uh, was, there were so many bad things that, that happened, obviously, the Dakota, John right. Lennon, but um, it's a remarkable movie. It's it's suspenseful, it's scary, it makes the supernatural credible. John Cassavetes is great. Um I, I will acknowledge the fact that Mia Farrow is great, even though, as we know, I'm not a Mia Farrow fan personally. But I, as an actress, I thought well, she's, she's brilliant done some in it. Terrific, uh, work, amazing. Right? Everyone who's she's luminous. Who's seen the the, the <laughs> let's not push it. Anyone who's seen the the, um, uh, uh, the great documentary about Bob Evans or Red Kid Stays in the Picture mm-hmm. knows the stories about how Frank Sinatra tried to get her off the movie, and it led to them breaking up because. Um, she realized that this could win her an Oscar, and it's such a great story how Bob Evans says, you know, she's going to leave. I have to go to do the detective with uh, Frank Sinatra because, you know, he's my husband, and he loves me, and, I, you know, this movie is taking too long. And how and old is Ronan Farrell? And and then... Uh, anyway. And and and, 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 <laughs> and, 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 and then... And then... And then uh, um, uh, uh, Bob Evans says, uh, well, you know, people are saying this could win you an Oscar. And she's like, I'll stay on the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the hell, Frank who and uh, you know and she's just so great and the transition she goes through when after she's been you know raped by the devil is uh, you know remarkable and um, the way that they uh, picture uh, the, the the show the devil and and the descent of dread city Blackmer and Ruth Gordon just incredible and uh, it's just it's just such a remarkable movie uh, brilliantly shot brilliantly scored uh, performances are all exceptional um, I, I just it's one of the it's not only one of the great horror movies or great supernatural movies it really is one of the great movies of all time and I just I love Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, you mentioned dread. It has that great sense of dread, that sense of claustrophobia. <laughs> that sense, you know, it's right. just terrific. I, claustrophobia in this huge apartment. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> yeah. In this amazing apartment, yeah. which any of us would love to live in. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love everything about this pick. I, I and I, I fully expected this to be your pick, but I I love everything about this movie. Um, I, I can't say enough about how much it feels like, you know, you could be watching Breakfast at Tiffany. <laughs> but but instead, what you get is this whole other horrific story about um, about motherhood or about mm-hmm. parenthood, mm-hmm. right? And what's so great about the story is that it it's grounded by what I think are very real fears that we have as parents. I think whether you're you know an expectant mother or a or a father in that process, that everything feels threatening. Everything feels like a question mark, um, and. That sense, you know, after you you have that child, that there is nothing that you will not do. 
Um, and there is something about the ending of that movie. It could have gone so many yes. different ways, and I'm not going to spoil it, but what happens at the very end feels so emotionally true, like yeah. what she does and the choice that she makes. Yes. Um, and it's made but, out of love. That's the crazy thing. And it's also imbued with the 60s tenet of never trust anyone over 30. Yes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Because they will knock you up with the devil's baby. Yeah. <laughs> Which I, I think was the other part of that tenet. I love what you said about it's one of the great movies about pregnancy. Maybe the best right. movie ever made about pregnancy. Yeah. Forget Baby Boom. Or It's Alive. <laughs> Even though I like Diane Keaton a lot more than I like Mia Farrow. But um, <laughs> pregnancy. And it's also one of the great films about motherhood. Yeah. As you allude to, uh, you know, and we don't want to talk too much about that um, because this could also be uh, a great candidate for Spoiler Week. Yeah, it really. Um, <laughs> which we've joked about doing one day. Um, but it's just a remarkable film. And, and you know, I I I love I I love The Exorcist, but uh, but to me, Rosemary's Baby is is it's not only my pick, but it's my favorite uh, devil movie. There's there's also <laughs> some really great behind the scenes stories um, just about getting this movie made. William Castle, yes, um, mm-hmm. who was the Schlockmeister of the '50s and the early '60s, um, read the this book. and yeah. everything, and he optioned it. Yeah. yeah, he optioned it. He read the book. He thought he he thought that it was going to be his ticket to legitimacy. Right. right. He fought like crazy to hold on to the. He wasn't even a B movie uh, uh, director producer. He was a C movie producer director. <laughs> One step up from Ed Wood. That's right. Yeah. Um, and it's just there's uh, Frank. There's so many great movies that you could make about the making of these things. You just uh, a movie about William Castle and his relationship with this film. I mean, it's almost heartbreaking. You know, anybody who's ever you know fallen in love with a piece of material. He was right. He yeah. knew it. But you know, had William Castle made that movie, we would no. not be talking about it not. today. And you know, it took Bob Evans to say. You know, we want this project. You can be a producer, but you know, I know just the right guy. And he, he off of Fearless Vampire Killers, mm-hmm. he thought this is the right guy. So he went to meet with uh, Roman Polanski, um, who was at the time was up for like Downhill Racer, or he brought him in saying, "Oh, you're going to get Downhill Racer," which ended up going, which was a lie because he knew he liked to ski, uh, and ended up going to I think Michael Ritchie, right? Or uh, but um, maybe not. But but but. Um, you know, he, he he lured him there under false pretenses, got him to read Rosemary's Baby and convinced him um, to do it. And this this was after, you know, Sharon Tate. This was after he'd gone through, you know, this horrible, horrible uh, tragedy. But, of course, it's before, um, uh, you know, before Chinatown. And um, it, it's just a uh, – or maybe it's not before Sharon Tate. I think it might – is it after or before? It was 68. This is 68. And Sharon was murdered in... Archivist? Yeah. 69. <laughs> 69. 69. So yeah. maybe she was still alive. But um, it, it, it's just... Uh, it, what what an amazing uh, movie. And just um, uh, the filmmaking is is, is is extraordinary. You know, because most of it takes place in the apartment. Yeah, and right. there are even great cameos, like Ralph Bellamy, mm-hmm. you know, uh, is so good. As uh, as the, and then Charles Grodin mm. is is great. So you have Ralph Bellamy as as the the great um, uh, not pediatrician the uh, the, the uh, obstetrician obstetrician um, uh, Doctor Saperstein yes Doctor Saperstein uh, and then you know Charles Grodin who's like the hip young guy. You were right. talking about this whole yeah. don't trust anyone over twenty one. Um, you know, and and even that is so resonates when you think, oh, you go to the older, respected guy because he's older and he's delivered a lot of babies, and everyone says he's the best. Right. But really, who's the one who's more invested in her? Uh, it's the young guy with less experience. Right. Who's it's, it's just everything about that movie so great. Love it, love it. So yeah. Friday, I don't think you have a disagreement at the. At the <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm super, I'm super glad. And there's so many great picks for for for, for Friday. Yeah, we, we talked about obviously the one that looms the largest is The Exorcist. Yeah. Sure. Um, Exorcist and three. Exorcist three. Yeah. You know, um, Shout Factory just put out a new cut of Exorcist Two: The Heretic. I haven't watched it yet, but did um, they? Wow. I'm, I'm curious is how bad. I, I, well, it hasn't it's been before. It's 15 minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> all the good parts. Yeah, you know, um, I was thinking about why maybe movies about the devil and Satan are particularly can be particularly effective, and that's that's because it's so rooted in religion and religious tradition. Mm-hmm. Even you know, as a kid, I wasn't particularly religious, but you still have that touch of superstition. Like, well, this could be real, right, unlike right. a giant monster or yeah. something. That maybe there is evil powers that well, can look, do this. Well, look, I mean, right. look at Omen Three: The Final Conflict yeah. about the president who's the Antichrist. I mean, yeah. that's a documentary now. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, there's so many. I mean, we didn't talk about the Omen, David Seltzer, yeah. right? Um, which is uh, you know, which is sort of the 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 um, what, what should we say? The popcorn version of The Exorcist, yeah. in a way. It's all for you, Damien. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, it's it's like it's the movie version of The Exorcist. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, you know, exactly, as if it were just a movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I, 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 you know, there's the bizarre um, uh, second part of the Apocalypse trilogy. We talked about John Carpenter last week, mm -hmm. um, but there's uh, Prince of Darkness. Yeah, which I sure. love. Which I love I thought too. that was yeah. going to be Ashley's pick. You know what? I didn't pick it because I thought we had picked it last year. Mm. No, um, we didn't. Pick but, it. I mean, I can talk your ear off about Prince of Darkness. And the anti-god. I mean, right? I mean, that movie is so cool because it manages to combine this big science fiction idea with this big um, horror idea in a way that is really compelling and cool. I mean, you've got messages being sent back from the future that change based on the thing. Oh, oh, spoiler alert, that change based on things that happen inside the film. You have this amazing imagery um, that John Carpenter creates so very simply. Um, and just these great little moments. You know, we have something to tell you and you're not going to like it. You know, it's just simple, simple, simple. I mean, Alice Cooper is terrifying in this movie. He's there in a cameo, but yeah. it totally works. It doesn't feel like it's some rock star cameo. He is like one of the most unsettling things in the film. Um, and you will never look at uh, a mirror in the same way again. And I think it is funny when you look at Carpenter, when he's working with big budgets, a Memoirs of Invisible Man, Starman, which a lot of people like. We're not huge Starman fans. But you look at when he had no money, They Live, uh, uh, Prince of Darkness. These are much better movies. Right. You know, uh, Halloween. I mean, th th these are, you know, working under the constraints of, of uh, le less, uh, you know, less is more. Um, you'd mentioned Oh God, You Devil. Which, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, right. Now, I got to ask you, because I know you're all huge Fury, Fury Road fans here, as I am. George Miller, who's just such a great sure. director. Um, Witches of Eastwick. Witches of Eastwick. Where are you on? One of my, I love Witches of Eastwick. Yeah. That's, I, agree. Uh, I won't call it a guilty pleasure, but I will never... Uh, skip over it if I'm, you know, looking around TV and see it. I love well, and it. not just because Michelle Pfeiffer has never looked better, nor oh. Susan Sarandon, uh, nor Cher. All of them, yeah. all of them are so beautiful in it. And Nicholson is freaking incredible. Yes, I mean that that one speech that he has oh, yeah. in the church. Are they an accident? Yeah, yeah. Yes. I'd like to know: were women a mistake, <laughs> or did he do it to us on purpose? <laughs> Well, because if it was a mistake, maybe we can do something about it. <laughs> so, funny. as you talk about these iconic devil performances, these over the yeah. overheated, that there's nothing better than Al Pacino at the right. end of Devil's Advocate, yeah. which, which was an, which was another one of my picks. Yeah. And that was the other one. Six Degrees of George Miller, uh, Charlie's Theron was playing uh, Keanu yes, Reeves. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I'm Keanu a fan Reeves of man. Yeah. played John Constantine, <laughs> and like he met the devil played by Peter Stormare, yeah. who was. It was one of the better devil performances. Yes, it was. He's That's great a better as devil. The devil. <laughs> a much better devil. I mean, it's up there with Viggo Mortensen. Great devils of the 90s. Yeah. Well, uh, and if you're talking about great devils of the 90s, you got to mention South Park, Bigger, Longer, Uncut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. That was one of the most outrageous portrayals of the devil. It's like a huge, flamboyantly sort of gay man. <laughs> the, these are all... Neil Gaiman? Yes. <laughs> the, these are all great picks, but I have to say, you know, if anything gave Rosemary's Baby a run for its money, for me, and again, as much as I love The Exorcist, you know, I got very, I, I came very close to picking this as my, my other pick, which was Angel Heart. I was just yeah. about yeah. to say that. Yeah. Angel Heart, uh, you know, it combines horror and film noir brilliantly. Alan Parker, very much like Ken Russell, was an iconoclast who was doing very interesting work in a variety of genres. I, I think the supernatural horror film, he just nailed completely. Um, Mickey Rourke, uh, you know, at the height of his powers in the late 80s, post nine and a half weeks, right. but before his face got hit by a Mack truck, um, you know, pre pre Wild Orchid, post Just nine and a half uh, weeks. Um, but Robert De Niro is great yep. as the devil. Uh, it has a great mystery. Lou Cipher. Lou uh, Cipher. <laughs> yeah. Um, Again, you know, he Alan Parker very occasionally cast the movie with a combination of real actors and then also people he found like in New Orleans and mm -hmm. just re real people that he thought were interesting mm -hmm. to be a lot of the, the character actor roles. Um, Lisa Bonet is in it. She's mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. And she, she obviously at the time she was on the Cosby show. She got a lot of heat for yeah. doing this movie. 
Um, it didn't do particularly well at the box office, but it's another movie where there's a sort of existential dread to it, and it's not like anything super scary, but it's more it's like creepy. It's, it's creepy. creepy, and it's beautifully photographed. In Gorgeous. that vein, there's The Believers, which oh, oh Mark Frost, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. totally freaked me. That was out, about man. the same time yep. that Believers came out. Um, Believers so like is cinema interesting. Cinema verite with like all of this shit that was just, just completely unsettling. Yeah. Uh, well, and then, then I saw her face, and now I'm a believer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a monkeys reference. Totally. You're different. a little young for that. <laughs> uh, totally different. Oh no, no, I he, the monkeys. That was like the guy who was on Star Trek, right? Um, <laughs> Planet of the Apes week here. On, um, um, completely different tone and style. Well, yeah. maybe not a different tone, but certainly a different style. Uh, Dario Argento, Suspiria, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. right? Which is just amazing and bonkers and has a really great score by Goblin um, who later went on to score Dawn of the Dead um, and then there is uh, Bava's uh, Demons and mm-hmm. Demons 2 um, I mean just there's so many great movies that kind of take advantage of what I think Steve was getting at with this very sort of primal um, like very basic fundamental fear of this idea that there is evil out there and it means us harm and not only does it mean us physical harm um it means us spiritual harm right right it is it's it can be temptation in very subtle ways here's another one bedevil oh uh, uh, bedazzled. Bedazzled. bedazzled bedazzled yes yes yeah, bedazzled. i was yes. just going to mention that yeah. i just yeah. watched the new blu-ray of that peter cook last yeah. week uh, peter cook dudley moore yeah. where uh peter cook uh wants to buy dudley moore's soul yep. in exchange for seven wishes or, or nine wishes uh, yeah yeah and yeah, you're talking about the original, not the, the, remake. the original, the original Hurley, not the remake yeah, yeah. with Elizabeth Hurley. Yeah, although you know Elizabeth Hurley is lovely. Yeah, sure, not a, not enough for watching that. A movie, lot of people though. love Mephisto Waltz, great Jerry Goldsmith sure. score. Question: um, Does Legend qualify? Since uh, we have uh, Tim Curry as hmm. a darkness, uh, not I, I don't, a satanic I don't character. Think so. I feel as though it's fantasy. I would yeah. put that under. How about Dark something fantasy. like it's not real, Dark, like perhaps, the devil. but yeah. yeah. Something like the Ninth Gate. Well, yeah, I, you know, it's so funny you say that. I was just going to say the Ninth Gate, which is sort of Rosemary's Baby Light, but a a, <laughs> a, 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 a solid movie with it's totally uh, with, solid. Uh, Johnny, Depp, Johnny Depp, Manuel Signe. Is, is Michael Bean? Frank Langella, very creepy in that. Yeah, very creepy. Frank Langella, who he's, might he's remember from He Man and the Masters of the Universe, <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> or, uh, or or as Dracula in the John Badham yeah. Dracula, or Deep Space Nine arc about yeah. the circle. I just um, remember Ninth Gate being. Uh, I had very low expectations going into it, and was pleasantly surprised. Right. At Me how good too, it was. and a great score. Yeah. Um, I, look, I really like it. You know, I think it's it's a very tough week. This is a very tough. Week. There's a couple more Amityville horror, right? Yeah, but but uh, yeah, that's I guess more house it's more of a haunted house. house. Yeah, 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 that's true. Sure. We are, and then, well, actually, look, man, the whole thing with the pigs, and it's like we are a legion. It's like all of that imagery comes out of the the legion story, right? So it's like mm-hmm. yes, it's haunted house, but the very strong implication of it is that it is about a possession, right? right? So I I can yeah, I can see yeah, the argument. The I just case. don't know that if it's as if I like it as much as I like some of the other films oh, yeah, that we're yeah, talking yeah. about. Or, or but, the car. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, or the hearse. Okay, then Christine. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Also John well, that's true. That oh, has the devil in it. Yeah, it does. But are they ever possessed? No. No. I don't think so. Well, we're doing devil movies and possession. It's right. Not, it's yeah, both. Yeah. It's well, both. How about The Shining? The Shining is. Mm. Yeah. So he's possessed shining, by shining, shining, some so, kind of evil elemental force. Or is, he? or is he? Why have we not done Stanley Kubrick week? Because you haven't written it for us yet? Yeah. No, we, we, should, <laughs> well, we, should, we should do we that. Should consider that. I, I think uh, to consider Shining for that. Uh, Shining sure. is a very uh, polarizing film. A lot of, you know, obviously Stephen King's not a fan. We, on the other hand, are, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, if we do Stanley Kubrick week, I think we should just light the whole set with candles. <laughs> That's really funny. We'll we'll, call, we'll do the Barry Lyndon thing. We'll just or, light it with candles. That's really funny. The Last Temptation of Christ. Interesting. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, some. Well, I'm say... surprised Mark hasn't brought up the Devil's Reign with William. Oh, with Shatner. Shatner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well you know, I, I, I probably would have gotten there. It's not good. It's not very good. <laughs> even though Shatner's great. At it. Of course. Uh, <laughs> can, can we? I, I think you know, just kind of throw some very specific, well-earned love at The Exorcist Three. Yes. Sure, um, we should. I, sure. you know, it, oft overlooked. That's another movie that is among my very favorites. That I think was a surprise to people how great sure. it was. Um, the dialogue is just amazing. Yeah, 
Um, it is so well directed. It's so William well Peter Blatty, William the Peter Blatty, William Peter Blatty. Blatty. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, it has, I think, and I'm not going to spoil it. You'll know it when you see it. It has absolutely, positively, in my humble opinion, the best, best jump, jump scare, scare in, yes. in, in the history of film. Yeah. Period. And of course, I, I, I'll repeat my story. But as they were shooting that, I was off in one of the hospital rooms painting on the wall, It's a Wonderful Life, <laughs> while they were shooting that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and how great was George C. Scott in that Perfect. movie? Fantastic. He was awesome. He was great. I believe in you. And, and uh, Shout Factory carp. just put in uh, put out a, a new edition fish. of that. Last year, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if you haven't seen The Exorcist uh, 3, you really should. It's really worth uh, it. It's and really the bonus good. materials feature me. So, well, that's <laughs> an extra added reason to see Exorcist 3. Um, I would say for Friday, um, you know, as much as I would advocate for Angel Heart, I don't think I'm going to get you guys there. Uh, I, I don't, I, I'm on board with Angel Heart. Um, I think it probably should be The Exorcist, though. Okay. I would think so. I, yeah. I, I can go the for The granddaddy of yeah. all yeah. Uh, possession. The Exorcist A, nobody B, C, <laughs> C. Yeah. I, I think it got to be. Because you know what? We have nothing bad to say about it. We've barely yeah. talked about The Exorcist. There's nothing to say that Before hasn't we were said. smart enough to number them. I mean, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's such... An incredible film, and we're talking about the original, not the special edition. Yeah, yeah. you right. know, with the with the ending that Blatty wanted at the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, um, it, it, it's dark. Uh, it is you know, and, and no spider walk sequence. Right. Um, it's uh, it's 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 just a very oppressive and disconcerting, and it, it's enough to make you believe in the devil. The, the, it's it's enough to make you pee on the floor. Yeah, I mean, and look, Blatty got his chance to say what he wanted to say in The Exorcist 3, and he said it right. very well. And uh, also, personal story with The Exorcist. Um, back in college, when I had just started dating my wife, I mean, I don't know why like, so many of my stories about these movies come down to Ashley took his wife to a completely inappropriate <laughs> film. Mm -hmm. But uh, we were playing uh, you know, The Exorcist at like the student union, right? Like It was just, okay, they were going to have it. They were going to show it. And I thought, okay, great, right? It's like it's the old move, right? It's You, you take your date to see a horror movie, and then it's all like, ooh. Dude, such a mistake. Like, I mean, I thought she was going to need to be medicated after that film. Like, she didn't want to talk to me. She didn't want to look at me. It was like... It's that powerful. It, yeah. it was that powerful. It's so great. And like Rosemary's Baby, it feels like you are in a film um, that is that's not about what it's about, right? right? What it's, the, the devil, the supernatural aspect of it, like it, the sort of the confrontation with evil is a, is a part of it, but it grows organically out of this film that feels like it's just about a mother trying to figure out what's wrong with her kid. Right. Right? right, and which is also an interesting connection. Right, um, but I I love The Exorcist. I well, and that, you know this, this is an era of the slow burn movie yeah. where it's yeah. exactly what you said. You think it's about one thing, and then suddenly it's about something else, or then suddenly it becomes a horror movie. Now everything has to happen at the front. You don't have that. I mean, that was one of the things I really liked. You know, it's not a great movie, but from Dust Till Dawn, I love the first hour. It's sort of this heist movie, mm -hmm. and then suddenly it becomes this vampire movie. And it's like movies don't do that anymore. They 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 they're one thing or the other, and of course. The Exorcist, like a lot of these great movies do, is uh, inspired in a huge subgenre. I mean, I, I we haven't even talked about you know exorcism of Emily Rose and exorcism of this person, exorcism of that person. I mean, how many of these knockoffs have there been? And they all seem to have made money. I haven't seen half of them. Repossessed, um, right? Repossessed, yeah, the, the parody version. Yes. Um, you know, and then uh, you know, even Morgan Creek is still trying to milk The Exorcist. They did um, that Exorcist, uh, the beginning. Uh, uh, right. which didn't do very well. But then Sean Crouch did a wonderful TV series yes, for Fox did. called The Exorcist, mm -hmm. which went back to what worked about The Exorcist. And it was a very, you know, very, very, you know, cagey and, and, and smart. And, you know, obviously Sean's immensely talented. Yes, he is. And I uh, I watched that series uh, while, while feeding one of my uh, my infant twins. So he's also seen The Exorcist. Um, so <laughs> there goes my uh, Dad of the Year award. <laughs> right? So, but, my God, we could program a month with these movies. We shouldn't. We shouldn't. No, no, because it's... Uh... <laughs> just because right, we can do a thing. Next is the 18th. What do we have on the 18th? Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got to say, The Devil Made Me Do It. What a great week of movies. Monday. One Monday is Ken Russell's The Devils. Tuesday is The Prophecy. Wednesday. The Evil Dead. Thursday, it's Rosemary's Baby. And Friday, it's the one that started it all. The Exorcist. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have to say, uh, we have one more week uh, as we count down to Halloween. 
of um, our Killers and Crazies week. This will be uh, movies about serial killers and uh, mad murderers and the Jasons and the, you know, we'll see. We'll see if Jason murderers. turn up. Or, yeah. Yeah. Some of them we, are you know, really cool. Freddie be there. Enjoy their work. Michael Myers. Who knows? <laughs> we'll find out. But uh, that'll be next week as we, we finish our three weeks uh, counting down the Halloween. Um, but we want to thank you for uh, joining us for this exciting second season of the 430 movie. It's great to be back. It's great to be back. The devil did not make us do it. We came of our own volition. Well, he might have. Um, we just don't know it yet. This is a slow burn. Oh. <laughs> we want to thank you for joining us all here at the 430 Movie. If you're a fan of this podcast, you may want to check out Electric Surge's other podcasts like Inglorious Trexperts, the only uh, podcast for Star Trek fans with a life every Saturday, and The Rebel and the Rogue, a Star Wars podcast, uh, which deals with all things Star Wars every Tuesday. And of course, Best Movies Never Made every other Monday. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Tell your friends. You can also follow us on social media at 430 Movie Pod, or you can pick up some really neat 430 Movie logo wear at 430movie.com. And uh, we couldn't do these shows without the help of our brilliant sound engineer, mixer, all-around uh, booster, Mr. Bill Ritter. Uh, Bill back in the booth, who's making the sound as good as we possibly can. And, of course, our producer, Natalie Miscali, and everyone here at Electric Surge Network, including Dean Devlin, without whom none of this would be possible. So the Devlin you, made us do it. The yeah. Devlin <laughs> made us do it. <laughs> <laughs> the Devlin Max Devlin. Yeah. Uh, we forgot about that classic. Saturday. That's Saturday. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's, that's Saturday. Saturday. That's right. That's right. The Devil and Max Devlin. What was that? Bill Cosby and Jason Robards, right? Oh God. Yes. Wow. Oh, my goodness. That is... Uh, Save it for the next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Bill anyway, Cosby week. we will see you back here next week for Killers and Crazies Week, or whatever we end up calling it. Um, <laughs> thanks for joining us, and Eyewitness News starts now. This week's episode is brought to you by Megadodo Productions, publishers of the Encyclopedia Galactica and the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Don't panic! This podcast is a production of the Electric Surge Network.